So we're in the pool in El Salvador and we're going to practice learning how to duck dive. And we got a bunch of different Amigas here riding different sizes of surfboards. So we're going to experiment with what's the biggest surfboard that you can actually duck dive and also working on technique how to do it. Boom. So the key to a good duck dive, number one, you need to have some speed. That's going to make it easier. Number two, it's a timing thing where you do it on the wave. And then it's also the physical aspect where you put your foot on the back of the board. And that's all those things are going to change a little bit based on the size of your surfboard. I have this little tiny, really cute 5'4", and it duck dives really, really easily. So you want to get up some speed. You want to have your hands just kind of like right at your shoulder. The first step is to push down. And I like to keep my knee on the board to kind of hold the board, like help it push down. Like you push down with your hands and then you're keeping it underneath you with your knee. And then once you get down to the depth, then you push through with whatever reaches. Like I use these little tiny boards, so a lot of time I'm pushing with my shin right here. And then if I want to go really deep, then I'll put my foot on there. But a lot of times if I'm being lazy and it's not really that big a wave, I just push with my shin. But if I had a longer board and my foot reached the edge of the board, then I would always push with my foot. And then another thing that we've seen girls do that doesn't really work that well is they think they got to get the foot all up. Then they go for their duck dive and they like spread the leg out and then the board goes all like that. So to those girls, I tell them to keep your knees in the middle of the board and then get your foot on from there. So now that you got your body right, let's talk about timing. What you want to do is get some speed up and start your duck dive soon enough that you can get underwater before the wave hits you. You want to get underneath the whitewash so that it can go over you and you come up on the other side. If you start the duck dive too late, the wave hits you before you have a chance to get deep enough. If the wave hasn't broken yet, if it's just cresting at the top, you can wait till the last minute and just kind of duck dive underneath the lip. But if you're dealing with whitewash, you gotta start a little bit sooner so you can get all the way underneath it. The whitewash passes over you and you come up on the other side. Here are a few examples of some Amigas giving it a try and we can talk about what's going wrong. Here's an Amiga that's pushing down nicely with her hands, but she's not following through with her leg. So the board doesn't scoop through the wave very nicely. You have a really good push down, but there's no follow through, then the board just goes out that way. This is what you want the board to do underwater. Scoop down and then come back up on the other side of the wave. This Amiga is pushing down really nicely. She's scooping through with her leg, but her upper body's not getting down to the depth where the board is. So even though the board is deep, her body's not getting underneath the whitewash. Another thing that will help your duck dive be more awesome is keeping your eyes open. Probably not recommended if the water's super gross or if it's a little tiny whitewash on the inside with tons of sand. But if you're outside and there's a big wave coming, keeping your eyes open will help you because the whitewash is not uniform. It's not like a, a complete wall of darkness. There's like patches of more turbulent water and then there's patches of more airy water. And you can actually move yourself into the lighter patches and avoid some of the some of the force? Yeah, you can avoid some of the force of the wave if you look for it. And if, worst case scenario, the big force is going to hit you, at least you see it coming and kind of brace for it. I don't wear contacts, but Jackie does, and Jackie says that she still opens her eyes underwater and very rarely loses a contact. <laughs> so, a lot of girls come down on retreats and they say, I really want to learn how to duck dive, but then they bring these, like, really big boards. This is a 6'4". So, it's super hard to duck dive a board like this. Like even for me, it's really challenging. And for someone who's not good at duck diving, it's going to be nearly impossible. So keep that in mind. The problem might be your surfboard. But just for fun, I'll try and duck dive it in the pool. Let's see if I can make it go under. Wow! So what makes it more difficult? Is it that it's the width? It's just you more buoyant. The length or the width? It's the volume of the board. Like a little tiny board that barely floats, you can duck dive super easy. But a big floaty board just 
by definition doesn't go underwater very well. Right. So one thing you can do if you do have a big board, you really want to try to duck dive it. To get it underneath, you can scoop. Yeah. Because right. it's hard. If you have a big board on the water, if you push this down, it doesn't go because it's got all this volume on the water. So you're displacing all this water to make it go under, which is hard. But if you tilt it, then it'll go under much easier. So if, I'm gonna, if I was out surfing and I wanted to try and duck dive this board, I would tilt it to scoop it and then follow through like normal. And that's how you duck dive. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Now we're gonna need some long boards because Jackie's gonna do a how to turtle roll. How to turtle roll, Yay. Jackie's roll.